This is uh, Abigail Carl Clausen with the Rebels, Exiles, and Bridge Builders Oral History Project. Um, it is uh, February 6th, um, and I'm here uh, with Marcella Enz, and we're going to have a little conversation about uh, her uh, experiences here in the Campos Menonitas. Uh, so thanks for being uh, here with us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so just for starters, can you briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, okay, so as you already said, my name is Marcela Enz. I'm 27 year old and I live in the Campos Menonitas from Colton, Chihuahua. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, basically a business owner or I run a business and also my own, own boss as a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, so. Describe a little bit your background um, and your uh, connections here uh, in the campus. Okay, so my parents were born and raised here. I was well. My parents, when they married, they left what the traditional Mennonite church. So I, mm -hmm. I never had um, to grow up in that extreme or yeah, any type of extreme religion in mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. But then, of course, my parents decide to join a cult mm -hmm. so I was always the weirdo in school because uh -huh. yeah because I was always different than everybody else thing yeah but yeah we, but we continued living here my parents mm -hmm. never left the, they, we just love living here it's just mm -hmm. a great community to live in a great place yeah yeah um, and so uh, particularly when you were growing up what interactions between um, Mexicans and Mennonites were considered normal and what interactions were seen um, either as abnormal or forbidden okay so I remember having like, that my dad always had guests Mexican guests as a mm -hmm. kid so we always had that interaction since we grew up mm -hmm. and I went to um, Montessori school mm -hmm. which we had a Mexican teacher mm -hmm. so since kindergarten we already had that so for a lot of people, it was really strange because, no, you're not supposed to send children, your kids to a non Mennonite school. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people, it was considered abnormal and it was considered um, strange because like, oh, yeah, they will marry mm -hmm. somebody outside of the community. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, so basically dating or marrying someone outside of the Mennonite culture or community mm -hmm. is, well, until now, it's kind of different, but it was always seen as mm -hmm. um not normal or it shouldn't happen or mm. it's not accepted mm -hmm. and so back then do you remember anybody who um, was dating or had married outside the community oh. and kind of like what was uh, the reaction if that was something mm. you remember I remember my teacher my kindergarten teacher mm -hmm. she was second generation Chinese but mm. living in Mexico yeah and one of, of the little kids that was in class with me mm -hmm. her dad married her Oh, yeah. So the school shut down and it was uh -huh. a whole thing. <laughs> so that was the first thing I remember, the first Mennonite marrying uh, somebody else. Because oh, okay, yeah. back then, like, I didn't have that much to do with other people. Like, it was just mm -hmm. basically my family. Yeah. So I remember that very clearly. That the yeah. School shut down because of that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. And so did they stay in the area? Did they leave? Like mm, They did leave. Um, uh -huh. He he just got divorced, which was also taboo back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he got divorced, and he married her, and then I think they moved to the United States. Oh, okay, yeah, they yeah. didn't stay here. Yeah, so there wasn't like a place for that at yeah. all at, in the community. At yeah, the they time. probably wouldn't have felt comfortable staying here. Yeah, so awesome. they'd left. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, and so you talked a little bit about um, your your dad uh, having Mexican guests at the house, um, going to school. Um, with people outside the Mennonite community. Um, how did people uh, within the community respond to that, that level of interaction that your family um, considered normal? Since my dad is a business owner, and on that side they thought, okay, it's fine because mm -hmm. he's just doing business, right? Yeah. So yeah, on yeah, that yeah. level it was okay, but obviously they were concerned like, oh yeah, if the kids go there, they're going to marry a Mexican mm -hmm, <laughs> like mm -hmm. they just didn't think that that mm -hmm. was something possible or that could mm -hmm. work because yeah. nobody had really done it before like yeah. it wasn't something that anybody did so yeah, they yeah, were yeah. obviously worried about that but and so uh at the level of business oh okay everything's fine but anything beyond that like that's when you start yeah. giving concern yeah exactly from people um <laughs> okay so you grew up in a very conservative community um so you mentioned that that your uh parents uh, joined uh, a community um, that wasn't Mennonite, um, but was still very conservative. Uh, first, uh, uh, talk a little bit about um, your your background in that community. 
um, and then uh, your transition um, into uh, a different uh, a different lifestyle. Okay. Well, the it was it was very small. So basically, mm -hmm. the church it was my uncles or my cousins. It mm -hmm. was basically two or three families. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah, we were basically the outcasts from all the Mennonite community mm -hmm. that surround us because it was mm -hmm. strange. We didn't have a preacher in our on our mm -hmm. church so we always yeah. were listening to cassettes yeah so that's yeah, why yeah, they yeah. call us the tapes right? oh yeah 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 <laughs> and like oh you're that girl that goes to the tapes right? so that was always like yeah i know i am that person so yeah. for my parents yeah, first yeah. being totally traditional then um changing to kleingemeinde mm, and then mm -hmm. from there going to church of god and then going to this cult mm, it was just mm -hmm. like they've had all these transitions um yeah and for us it was basically um we were Allowed to do a lot more things than what what Mennonites considered like normal or okay, mm -hmm. but like we dressed differently. Yeah, we could basically as long as it was skirts, we could kind of dress mm -hmm. what we wanted to dress. Yeah, but um, yeah, like so that was the the difficult thing. You didn't fit in anywhere. You're yeah. not fitting in amongst the traditionals mm. or the modern Mennonites. You don't fit in with the Mexicans. Mm. You're just kind of like your own thing. Yeah, absolutely. So then when my parents left the church. Well, I was always a little bit of a rebel. I mm -hmm. always wanted to do my own thing. And yeah. Like, I always wore pants, even though, or jeans, even though I wasn't supposed to. Yeah. But slowly my parents were like, okay, yeah, well, clothing shouldn't define who you are. So yeah. they changed the way they were thinking. And then when my parents left that um, cult, the whole thing just fell apart. Mm -hmm. And then we just stopped going to church for a long time. And that's when mm -hmm. I moved to Guadalajara for a while. Yeah. First yeah, it was yeah. Vancouver and then Guadalajara. Yeah. So yeah, then yeah, yeah. I just transitioned into... What yeah, I am now, absolutely. I um, and so, um, for you, a lot of that leaving the community first to Vancouver and then to Guadalajara was um, very pivotal in in a lot of the transitions that you made. I don't know what that was. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> it, it like uh, was important, like yeah. Oh, yeah. to that time of transition, like being in other places besides that complex. Yes. Oh yeah, that was definitely a big thing. Because um, as a kid, we did travel a lot. Mm -hmm. That was also not seen as something normal. You're not supposed to spend money on mm -hmm. having a good time, right? Yeah. So yeah, for yeah. Uh, for that was uh, if I had never traveled, I think mm -hmm. it would have been the the change would have been a lot more extreme. Mm -hmm. But since mm -hmm. we did travel in Mexico, we did travel a little bit in the states. So, yeah, yeah. but living somewhere else is a totally different oh, story. Oh yeah. So absolutely. when I moved to Vancouver, absolutely. I was 15. Yeah. I didn't speak English at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, My dad yeah. is like, "Oh, that's the way to learn. I'm gonna." You can go and live with your sister. And then in school, nobody spoke Plotich, nobody uh -huh. spoke Spanish. Yeah. And I was just sitting there and then it sent me to ESL where everybody was just, um, everybody was Asian except for me. So mm, they were talking mm -hmm. and I didn't know what they were saying. Yeah. But I did yeah, learn yeah. pretty fast. So, and that was a good experience yeah, seeing yeah, yeah. a different part of the world. Yeah. And then absolutely. I came back and then when I came back, I just noticed how much everything had changed mm. in such a little short period of time. Yeah. yeah Every yeah, time yeah. I go somewhere and I come back, everything is just, changes so much around yeah. here yeah absolutely um so on, on part of that question about um the transition into more um uh, kind of like liberal uh lifestyle like both in and how you dress and the um the beliefs um what were some of the biggest changes for you um let me think about this i think the biggest change was not like being able to do something and not feel like you're doing something wrong mm, yeah, maybe yeah, like yeah, oh yeah, i'm yeah. wearing makeup and maybe it's not not such a bad thing or yeah. i'm dressing in something that maybe a short dress or shorts yeah. and it's actually not bad like yeah because when your mindset is so focused on something and then you can change that it's it's really freeing to be yeah. honest i think it was oh, yeah. freeing yeah. yeah and then i'll also yeah, seeing yeah. my parents go through that change it was really mm -hmm. nice because they were always so worried what everybody else is going to say or what other people were going to think about them. Yeah. But as we transition more and more into this liberal, like more being more liberal, like mm -hmm. they have not been as stressed out about yeah. what others are going to think yeah, about yeah, them. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's see. And so what have some the of the negative, I guess, consequences being of like, these new freedoms like that you that you felt um and these new decisions that you were making um was there any sort of negative uh 
impact or uh, feedback from like other people in the family or community? Mm, at first, it was um, well, my sister. She married a preacher's son, the one that lives in the Netherlands, and it was yeah. the same kind of cult that we yeah. had here. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, well, when my parents left, she wasn't able to speak to us anymore. So mm. it was really hard for my mm -hmm. parents not to be able to communicate with yeah. their daughter. Like we couldn't mm -hmm. talk to her at all. Mm -hmm. So that 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 took that was like for a couple of years. We still went mm -hmm. to visit her, but everybody was always like. Mm -hmm. Push, mm -hmm. like pushing us back. So even in that time of separation, like, oh, they're not supposed to be speaking with you. Everybody was still kind of pushing the boundaries yeah. of like, like We went there just yeah. because, I mean, my parents, my dad is like, I'm not going to not see my daughter. We, we're yeah. just going. And then we went. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. and the same thing around here from my, from my mom's family, which is more traditional. Mm -hmm. um, they always kind of, uh, in a way, were always a little bit like, oh, those are the, the different or the other ones. Are, yeah, yeah. But yeah, now yeah. they, everybody's very accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both my mom's family, also my dad's mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. It's surprising how well we all get along being yeah. from so many different yeah. religions and uh, yeah, yeah, like mindsets. Yeah. Well, this idea of kind of like over the period of time, everybody um, kind of decides, well, okay, like you're going to do things your way and we'll do things our way and, but yeah. we can still like, you know, interact and. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Because when my parents left the traditional church, um, my grandparents on my mom's side, they did mm -hmm. not talk to them at mm -hmm. all. They could not, mm -hmm. they were not invited to family gatherings, yeah. nothing. Yeah. And on my dad's side, it was a little bit more like, since my grandpa was a total rebel, he always wanted mm -hmm. to do things differently. He's like, yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. He's just praising it, my parents, yeah. but on yeah, my yeah, mom's yeah. side. So she didn't talk to her parents for years and they were not invited. And because mm -hmm. we have different mm -hmm. names, our names are not Anna or Maria or... Kind of yeah. like traditional yeah. type. So yeah, so they, they never wrote our names in the book of their grandchildren because our names oh, were truly yeah. worldly. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, with time, I think people have become more accepting, yeah. accepting around here when somebody yeah. else is a little different or they have mm -hmm. a different way of thinking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Brent uh, mentioned um, briefly about um, your time in Vancouver and Guadalajara, um, and, and specifically with Guadalajara, um, because you moved someplace where you um, didn't know anyone mm -hmm. at that time. Um, what were some of your motivations for, for moving to Guadalajara? Um, and what were some of the ways that living there impacted you personally and professionally? Okay. It's actually a weird story. I always <laughs> wanted to go someplace I didn't know anyone. Just, yeah. Yeah. I just, I want to be, go, go somewhere where nobody knows me and just see how it goes. Yeah. 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 So I was in a relationship with a Mennonite guy, actually. Yeah. 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 And, uh, he was a little possessive and mm -hmm. a little too much. And then I, when I broke up with him, he would just literally stalk me. Like, oh, wow. I could not go anywhere without noticing him following me or just. Mm. Yeah. Texting me, I'm outside your house. And I just mm -hmm. told my parents, I think this is the right time for me to go somewhere. So yeah, I yeah. started looking online on uh, photography courses. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, there was a, I was going to go to Monterrey or mm -hmm. Guadalajara, but uh -huh. Guadalajara is just a friendlier uh, city. Mm -hmm. It's not so industrial as Monterrey. So for like, sure. Oh yeah. I remember there going as a kid. I have to go. So mm -hmm. then I saved up money and I paid for the school and then mm -hmm. my parents drove me there yeah. with all the stuff. Yeah. And then when they left, I was on my own and it yeah. was, it was neat. Yeah. yeah. Because since living in the Mennonite culture and the community, you don't really get to know a lot about the Mexican culture. So over there, I got to learn about all these things I never knew before because mm -hmm. also in Northern Mexico, they're more, they say, agringados, more mm, like gringos. For sure. So the further south you go, the more you actually see of a real Mexican culture. Yeah. So yeah, after that, I, I got my um, degree in photography, mm -hmm. basically focused on product photography, yeah. but I also do portraits and yeah. all that. And when I came back, I just, I, I couldn't believe that that's what I left. Like when I came mm, back, mm -hmm. everything just seemed like, is it really, that's the way people still think here? Or mm, that's... yeah. I didn't think that was weird. Some, like, let's say I thought something wasn't weird and everybody was thinking, no, that's not normal. Like, oh, okay. Cause in a little time, you, you really do learn so much from other people that it yeah. does change the way you think about yeah. every, well, a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so what were some of the challenges coming back, 
um, to the campus after living in the city? You talk about things being different, but were there specific challenges that made it difficult? Mm, well, challenges maybe. Well, a thing was nobody was under no. Um, uh, nobody understood that you you can charge for something creative. Oh, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you just click the button. I'm like, no, there's a lot of work behind it. Like, yeah. Why yeah, would you yeah, charge yeah, yeah, so yeah. much? Because in Guadalajara, I was a assistant to a wedding photographer. Yeah. And he would pay me for my job, and then. Mm -hmm. Nobody would even not even want to pay me what I got as an assistant mm. for being an actual photographer. Yeah. So they're like, no, it's just easy. You just click a button. But um, yeah, it was time. They're all mm -hmm. also learning that. But that mm -hmm. is definitely like you come back and you're like, yeah, yeah I know something. I want to mm -hmm. come back mm -hmm. to the campus and do something. And then yeah. you know, everybody's just thinking, oh, no, that's not worth the time or money. Yeah. And then also yeah. studied um, personal image consulting. Yeah. And I tried to start that, but nobody was interested. So yeah, I thought it was. Maybe something that people would be interested in here, mm -hmm. but no, they're not interested. So I, I never actually followed up on that. I yeah. just left it as yeah. something I just had a course in. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 specifically professional image consulting, like in terms of like um, kind of like public relations for a business or what specifically? Um, it's it's more focused on. Well, yeah, it could be that it's mm -hmm. it's more focused on. Um, yeah, like what kind of colors go go with your mm -hmm. skin tone? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. yeah, like what if, depending on your body shape, should mm -hmm. you wear prints on top? Okay, but yeah. I have had ladies that are interested. They're like, okay, yeah. So I noticed that some colors don't look good on me. Why? And I'm yeah. like, okay, your skin tone is this, and this, and and so they they are interested. And I feel like mm -hmm. now they're more interested as they were when I just got here. Oh, for sure. So I'm yeah. thinking of maybe I should offer a workshop on personal image consulting yeah because yeah, yeah. i think now they would be open for that yeah absolutely. because back in like you're not supposed to dress to look nice mm -hmm. or yeah but they're changing that that mindset is changing so yeah. i think now i could I, I would have an opportunity to uh -huh. to do that and how long ago was that that you were um there in guadalajara taking those courses mm, i think it was six years ago six years yeah. ago yeah so quite a bit of time yeah like it is quite a bit of time oh yeah, yeah definitely absolutely Let's see. Um, so you, you work as a professional photographer. Tell us a little bit about how you developed your interest and skills in the field. Um, I was, I remember my sister, she was taking in, uh, she was studying art, or uh, artes plasticas. I'm not sure how, how it's mm. called, but yeah, and a degree in art, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. she had a camera and she's like, I want to get a new one. Do you want to buy my old camera? I'm like, sure. Why not? And mm -hmm. ever since I had it, I just started taking pictures of yeah. everything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and I had that camera for a long time until it stopped working. Mm -hmm. But I knew there was so much more to learn. So that's mm -hmm. why I decided to actually study and learn all the technical things of yeah. photography and all the yeah. tricks that you need to know to make a picture look good. Yeah. But I think that was, that was yeah, my first camera I got it at what, 15. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I was young, I guess. Yeah. I was just in the moment where I was... I was in school, but everything was boring. I wasn't interested in anything. Like, yeah. And so photography was kind of like my escape from the boring reality of yeah. my life. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so who or what are um, do you primarily photograph currently? Okay, it's mostly portraits, mm -hmm. mostly couples. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah, mostly yeah. Mennonite couples or yeah. Mennonite. Yeah, because... Um, mm -hmm. People think it's too far to come from Kautemuk mm, to take for pictures. Sure. Yeah. And I tend to stay in my area unless mm -hmm. they do want to pay travel fee. Yeah. But so yeah, yeah, yeah around yeah. here, it's basically couples and families and mm -hmm. also restaurants for their menus. Yeah. They hired me for their photography. Cool. Yeah. Let's see. You've partnered with some governmental organizations and some researchers um, as a photographer. And then correct me if I'm wrong, I, I believe also as an interpreter. Um, I think that that was my sister, the interpreter. Oh, yeah. okay. But you you were doing um, photography. photography for these. Uh, yeah, for this. Um, what was it? The tourist guide from the Campos Menonitas. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, what were what were some of those experiences like? What were some of the 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 projects you worked on? Um, they were. Uh, I think it was two years ago. Mm. They since tourism has gone down. Um, they wanted to make a guide. Actually, I have it. I, I'll give you one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a, a guide of what there's to do and what there's to see here in the Campos Menonitas. Mm -hmm. So it's a long map and then mm -hmm. you just see the number and then you go to the picture. 
Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. Um, we went to all the businesses. So we yeah. took pictures of that. That was a lot of fun because I got to go to places I never actually thought I was going to go in, like in a, in a uh, fabric that makes these uh, farm equipment mm. that is made yeah, in the yeah, campus yeah, yeah. and design here and everything. So yeah. it was really nice to see. And it was a little bit challenging because um, since they always think I live so far away, I always mm -hmm. had to go everywhere. So yeah. it was driving every day super mm -hmm. far away because sometimes we're in La Junta, sometimes mm -hmm. we're someplace else. So yeah, that all was, over the campus. Yeah. Like, so that was yeah. time consuming for me because everybody else would go with the van and I had to mm -hmm. go with my own car. So yeah. But yeah, but other than that, it was, it was great. Yeah. And for the other, mm -hmm. and for the other book, we were interviewed by uh, two ladies. They, they were, um, yeah, basically about women in the Mennonite campus that mm -hmm. are, yeah, like business owners mm -hmm. or that have a degree in something. So, so mm -hmm. something that's not the typical Mennonite lady yeah. that stays yeah, yeah, at yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let's see. Um, you've also done some modeling. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Modeling. That was, <laughs> I don't even know how that started. <laughs> um, what, what was it again? Oh yeah. Now I remember. Mm. Um, same story. I had broken up with a boyfriend Yeah. and I was like, well, now I need to find something to do to take my mind off of things. Yeah. And it yeah, just yeah, happened yeah. that uh, a friend from uh, called Kimuk that I know, he's like, this store is asking if, if I, like, I'm looking for a model to see if we can promote their clothes. Yeah. And, yeah. And they had asked him and he was supposed to find the girl. Yeah. And then he yeah, like, yeah, asked yeah. me and I just said, yes. He's like, are you sure you don't want to think about it? I'm like, no, yeah, I want to do it. Yeah. I yeah, just thought yeah. like, finally something I can just get my mind off of. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one. Yeah. It was basically a photo shoot a month. And, uh, I did that for, I think a year and a half. Mm. And, Last year, um, they hired me for a tourist promotion. Yeah. For photo shoot, basically, um, to promote the Tres Culturas. Mm -hmm. So we took pictures yeah. also on the tourist spots, like here at the cabins, at the mm -hmm. Mirador. Yeah. And, and then it was the same thing, like we borrowed clothing from local stores. Yeah. So everything was done with people from the area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that was, yeah, that was definitely a fun oh, experience. Wonderful. Yeah. Cool. And they're coming out. I think in March or in April. Oh, okay. Photos. Yeah. They're going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. on billboards and everything. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited awesome, to awesome. see how they turn out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, and so these uh, interactions uh, with, with uh, modeling, with photography, um, how has that impacted the level and frequency of your cross-cultural interactions? Mm, it has, yeah, definitely increased by um, a big shot. Basically, yeah, I, I interact more, mm -hmm. I think, with uh, Mexicans than mm -hmm. I do with Mennonites on a daily basis. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and mm -hmm. since when I was a kid, I never, yeah, since I never really fit in with the Mennonite mm -hmm. crowd, yeah. I always ended up hanging out more with uh, Mexicans. Mm -hmm. So I was basically the first girl that hung out with Mexicans mm -hmm. and here in the campus basically yeah. if yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to go to the city but I'm like you guys you can come here I'm yeah. gonna show you around yeah 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 and everybody always did um look at me weird and they mm -hmm. didn't want to talk to us because oh they're not supposed to be here mm. we didn't invite yeah, yeah, yeah. well you're bringing all of these people yeah. in supposedly and yeah you can't have a Mexican in Nindarp yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah 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 we're just supposed to be us each of you hanging out yeah exactly so sometimes when we didn't feel accepted we just Stay there for a while and left and did something else. Yeah. yeah but yeah, I yeah. see that nowadays everybody is hanging out more. But this was yeah. also way back when, when I just got back from Vancouver, which is like seven years ago. Yeah. So yeah, back yeah, then yeah, it was yeah. strange. Yeah. yeah, they didn't think it was normal or it wasn't supposed to be that way. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Uh, something that I'm finding really interesting is that there is um, a lot of um, like Latin American influence, like in, in fashion and makeup, um, here in the campus. Um, so how has that impacted your, um, personal style? And, um, when did you start noticing that shift here in the campus? Okay. I, re yeah, as a kid, I always wanted to, I always looked at what they're wearing and like, Ooh, they're wearing these nice pants, these belt pants. I was like, mm -hmm. I want those, but yeah. of course I couldn't have them. Yeah. But I was always ad admiring like what they were wearing because mm -hmm. since 
since it was so restricted on what you could wear yeah. I had this little obsession with that and yeah as time went on like I just ended up uh, finding my own style now I think my style is I don't know it is influenced by the Latin mm -hmm. but I'm not so much into the bright colors and all the yeah that thing like uh -huh. they love that yeah but with time like I went through all the phases but yeah. now I kind of found, found my own style which is very basic minimal almost yeah no colors and yeah, yeah, but yeah. I have noticed that um, all the Mennonite girls that are just going through that change, uh -huh. it's always Latin fashion uh -huh. first. It's the, uh -huh. the super neon colors mm -hmm. and the bright patterns. And, mm -hmm. and it's actually really nice because they still wear their skirts, but mm -hmm. they have this little touch to them that's mm -hmm. not the traditional boring colors like yeah. black and brown and yeah. that they had to wear. So it's yeah. And it has started, I think... I think back when I got back from Vancouver, which yeah, it was I think eight, seven or eight years ago. There wasn't the change wasn't as yeah. noticeable. So I think yeah. in the last six years it has changed yeah. drastically since Pinterest came out. I think as well. Oh yeah, because everybody yeah, yeah, has a yeah. phone now, so they can Google like, oh yeah, nice skirts, and mm -hmm. they just make everything themselves. But mm -hmm. they definitely have inspiration where to take yeah. everything from. And back then they didn't mm -hmm. have. TV, no Wi-Fi, no internet, no smartphone, Yeah, which they all have now. So yeah. I know that that has a lot to do with that as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. And something I've been noticing is that even with people um, who are dressed more traditionally, um, like these very high heels, oh, or yeah. very sparkly. Super high heels. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since we live close to town, they mm -hmm. can go there and buy all these things. Mm -hmm. I guess, which back in the day when my parents were young, they couldn't do it because going to the city with the horse and buggy was yeah. almost impossible so yeah most girls they yeah since everybody drives now like they have the option like they can go buy stuff that their parents don't even know that they have oh, that they have yeah, in the hidden yeah. drawer and then when they go out they just quickly change and yeah then they they're out for the sunday and before they come home they change into oh, their dress yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that happens a lot absolutely yeah. absolutely <laughs> Which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was walking around and I was like, wow, this is so very high and very sparkly. Yeah. And yeah, just paired with, you know, more traditional clothing. Yeah, yeah because yeah. the Latinos, they, in, in general, Latinos, they like sparkly, mm -hmm. bright. So yeah, yeah, you see that a lot with the high heels and there's very high heels. Like, yeah. Absolutely. I can't walk in those. <laughs> um, so, uh, you mentioned, um, you're, you're 27. Um, and you're an unmarried woman who's an entrepreneur, um, and, and that's not still not very typical in a lot of ways. Um, let's see, you're making a life path that for many uh, who hold to traditional gender roles is not acceptable. So, what res resistance has you received? It's actually, imp I have received very little mm. resistance. I'm yeah. impressed. Because when yeah. uh, my dad put me in charge of uh, the cabins, because mm -hmm. my brother, he was working in the other business that my dad has. So he's yeah. like, okay, yeah, yeah, you just have to do this now. Yeah. Because my yeah, dad yeah, always yeah. has treated us as equals. Yeah, absolutely. As guys and girls. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, ah, your daughter's going to run it. Is she capable of doing it? And the dad's mm -hmm. like, yeah, of course she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so far, I mean, I have sometimes when. Um, Somebody from the community wants to rent a cabin here. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, I'm friends with your dad. Can I talk to your dad? I'm like, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. he doesn't know anything about reservations. He's like, yeah, but I need mm -hmm. to talk to your dad to make a reservation. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, you can do it through me. Yeah, so sometimes exactly. I do feel that, especially exactly. when it's, they do not, I'm not sure if they want to talk to my dad to get something like for free oh, or if it's yeah, because yeah. they think I'm not capable of doing yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not yeah, sure yeah. why they do it, but sometimes they yeah. do it. But most of the time uh -huh. it's actually pretty Oh, Except it. I'm, I'm impressed. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's see. And so, what surprising forms of acceptance have you see received? You talked a little bit about that. Um, do 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 do. And then also, how has this impacted the kinds and frequencies um, of interactions you've had outside the Mennonite community? Okay. Um, sorry. Now I've got lost. Oh no no no. Um, so, um, sort of this, like, uh, not as traditional life path. Oh, yeah. How yeah. has that impacted uh -huh. the, the, uh, interaction? With the interactions okay. cross culturally. I think, yeah, because I do have this type of job and mm -hmm. I was able, like, yeah, because my parents were different, I have this 
I have an interaction with with uh, people outside of the community on a daily mm-hmm. basis. Yeah. But most girls my age don't. Yeah. They they're mostly at home, and when they do run a business, it's basically just they, it's not in a not necessarily like in a friendly kind of way. It's just mm. just strictly business. Yeah. Like for yeah, them, yeah. it's not building a relationship with somebody outside mm. of the community. It's just yeah, sure. oh, we just have to do business mm-hmm. because nowadays. I mean, there is a lot of women who have their mm-hmm. own bakeries, they have mm-hmm. a business and everything. Yeah. But they keep their interactions in a, a limited. Yeah, their yeah. Business, business, business and their personal, yeah. personal. In the so community. they don't mix that. And I like to, mm-hmm. yeah, well, sometimes when I hang out here, I meet awesome people. And then yeah. just this one time that we had um, a couple stay from Venezuela. Mm-hmm. And then I just invited them to our house for breakfast. Yeah. So I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. mom. Quickly make breakfast. Yeah. I invited some people over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, and then we ended up sitting there talking until lunchtime. Yeah. It was awesome because yeah, yeah, yeah. we had never met somebody from Venezuela, so t- learning about their culture and yeah. everything. So that was um, really nice. Yeah. Let's see. Um, so you've mentioned that, you know that a lot of women um, have their own businesses. A lot of them um, are from from home. Um, how has that changed? Um, women entrepreneurs um and then women in any kind of leadership how has that changed in your lifetime oh it has changed so so much i remember as a kid i don't think there was any bakeries Mm -hmm. there was i know one lady she was her own like she had her own business and it was Mm -hmm. just one lady she was selling i think she was selling uh clothing and i think also kitchen fare Mm. or like pots and pans so it was Ought to see she she was definitely considered like a different person because she was doing her own business and making yeah. her own money yeah but as time goes by i see it more and more especially since a lot of women now work from home with mm-hmm. um these businesses like uh, central oils or mm-hmm. a lot of things where you just yeah you can sell your things but you have to uh, put somebody under your name so you make money or like a pyramid, mm-hmm. pyramid yeah kind of yeah exactly but in a way it helps them just to it's like a little business for them and, yeah, and it's exactly. nice to see because back in the day it was just the lady was a, like a mom at home mm-hmm. with the kids and the mm-hmm. husband had the job yeah, yeah but even as even my mom when my dad started his business she was mm-hmm. in the office every day she didn't speak she still doesn't really speak spanish but mm-hmm. she tried her best and she yeah. was helping him yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. it was yeah like i saw my mom do it but a lot of people did not yeah, do that absolutely and they're changing that a lot a lot, mm-hmm. a lot a lot of young girls are opening like boutiques mm-hmm. and all, all kinds of uh like a yeah. spa or yeah. hairdressers so it's nice to see that change that yeah, they're yeah, yeah. getting they're more independent and they can mm-hmm. make their own money yeah not absolutely. depend from their husband yeah absolutely let's see uh what are your hopes for the future in this area Hmm. I actually have very high hopes for yeah. this area. Uh-huh. I think as soon as more people will, well, it's not. Well, I'm not saying that you have to study to be successful or mm-hmm. be uh, somebody better. I'm not, mm-hmm. not saying it makes me a person better or worse because here it's still challenging for somebody to be able to have a career. Mm-hmm. But a lot of young people are studying, and I think mm-hmm. that's gonna help us basically have um, in the community have our own lawyers. Mm-hmm. Have, because it does happen that since some don't really speak Spanish, mm-hmm. that lawyers have taken advantage of making someone sign a paper that they don't know what it says. Yeah, for sure. They sign it and then later they lose part of their land or they mm-hmm. lose a lot of things. Yeah. So that's going to, I think it's going to strengthen the community mm-hmm. because, mm-hmm. well, they're like my cousin, she's a lawyer. So mm-hmm. at least we have one lawyer already. In the community. <laughs> and there's a couple of doctors already. Mm-hmm. And architects as well. Yeah. So I think yeah, with yeah, time, yeah. people are going to study more and they're going to see that, that it can be used for like a good thing. It's not something mm-hmm. bad if you do decide to go to study somewhere. It's, yeah. And I think it's going to be, the community is going to be very successful. Like it's already very successful mm-hmm. business wise, mm-hmm. but it's going to be better because not every, like my dad says, not everybody can be a farmer. Yeah. And land yeah, yeah, is yeah. not as cheap as it used to be so you can't yeah. just be a young person and buy a huge piece of land and be a farmer because yeah it's impossible yeah so they have to see that there have to be other options for the younger generations to yeah. be able to be successful at something in yeah. their lifetime absolutely let's see um so for many people life in the compost has changed dramatically um in a very short amount of time um in what ways are the interactions that you've had 
cross-culturally different um, from your parents and especially your grandparents' uh, generation? Okay. Well, yeah, I have a, I have contact on a daily basis. I have friends mm -hmm. that are um, not Mennonites mm -hmm. and basically almost all my friends are non Mennonites. So yeah, yeah, yeah. my parents couldn't, would never have to have that back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But the thing is my dad's family mm -hmm. and my mom's family, they were so, so, so different. My mom's mm -hmm. family never had interactions with any Mexicans or mm -hmm. anybody else that was yeah. not in the community. Yeah. They never hired anyone to help them or they never, well, basically sometimes my mom just uh, told me that, mm -hmm. okay, somebody would come and ask for like a little money or they would mm -hmm. come ask for milk. And that mm -hmm. was basically it. Yeah. And on my dad's yeah. side, well, my grandfather, he adopted um, two Mexican boys. Mm -hmm. They just lived there for a couple of years. But yeah, yeah they're like, yeah, we don't want to go back and forth every day back to our house. Can we just live here? Mm. And my grandfather's like, yeah, why not? Yeah. So my yeah, dad yeah. did have that interaction and my mm -hmm. grandparents when they were, since, since, yeah, since they were younger. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. Um, that's where my dad learned to speak Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they all, and then they also had a radio and, and guitars, which yeah, they're not supposed yeah, to yeah, have. Yeah. And my mom's family, they didn't have anything like that, like yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. my mom was always really scared of uh, Mexicans because mm -hmm. as a kid, they would tell her, oh, if, you're, if you won't behave, a Mexican is going to come get you. Mm -hmm. So she was literally yeah. afraid. Like that's what they had told her. Yeah, absolutely. And my dad just like, uh, like my dad just, he said they had never said that in their house mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, yeah. And my grandpa was always, had always had friends over as well that were uh, Mexicans, mm -hmm. but that was not seen as okay in yeah. their community at all. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, they didn't yeah. like that at all. Yeah. But he was always excommunicated <laughs> anyway. So he probably dealt, thought like, oh, well, they can't do anything to me now. I'm yeah. just going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And invite people over. But yeah. My grandfather actually met Pancho Villa. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. a neat thing to know. He had come yeah. to, uh, to their house and asked for two cows. And my grandpa's like, yeah, you can have them. And he said, mm -hmm. no, I don't want them. I just wanted to know if you were gonna give them to me yeah and then yeah my grandpa always tells that story so i thought that was uh pretty cool that he actually met wow Antonia. and then that, that was when your grandpa was uh, a young child man. yeah yeah he or was younger. recently married like, yeah they had, i don't think they had any kids back then yet so yeah they were um younger but yeah he had met punch oh, wow. yeah little that story is, that he yeah. had yeah <laughs> so cross-cultural interactions right there from yeah. the beginning yeah and my grandpa was seven years old when they came from canada mm -hmm. so since my dad's family was always, I don't know why, but they were always a little different. Yeah. Even my grandpa's cousins, yeah. everybody that is a little bit related to me through that side of the family, they're all very open-minded. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think it, it, it has to do with how, I guess, my great-grandparents mm -hmm. raised them in a way yeah. because they think different, they thought differently back then yeah. than most of the, the people in the community. Yeah. Yeah. And my mom's side, well, they're still very traditional to this day. Yeah. yeah. My absolutely. mom is the only one that's not yeah. traditional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, you talked a little bit about like feeling like a rebel. Um, the name of the project is Rebel Exiles and Bridge Builders. Um, so do any of the other words apply to your cross-cultural interactions or are there other words that you would use um, also to describe uh, your cross-cultural interactions? I think, hmm, I think maybe I was a rebel. Mm, maybe mm -hmm. now I'm a bridge builder. Ah, I was yeah, definitely yeah, 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 yeah. a rebel because yeah. I was always in trouble for everything. Yeah. But I think now um, mm -hmm. what I do, well, what I try to do is when mm -hmm. people, a lot of people ask me like, so what is it, what is it like if you work at the cabins and you meet Mexicans all day? Like, what is it mm -hmm. like? I'm like, it's, they're just, people like everybody else, yeah. but for them, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a little bit um, weird still because mm -hmm. if they don't do it on a daily basis, they don't really understand what yeah, it's like. Sure. They're uh -huh. like, so, um, so they always have these questions that they ask yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think, um, yeah, I think they're people, they, especially because of my dad, they're more mm -hmm. open to um, being like thinking, okay, yeah, hanging out with Mexicans, it's not bad. Or, mm -hmm. and I was, if people ask me, I just like, no, it's, it's normal. We're, we're all humans, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and I like I have helped a couple of people, young younger girls that wanted to mm -hmm. study. They're like, mm -hmm. no, you can't because this and this and it's dangerous. 
Mm. And then their parents come to me and they're like, okay, so what happened when you moved to Guadalajara? I'm like, mm. it's, yeah. it's just, you have to adapt to it, but it's, yeah. it's safe. It's not just because she goes there, she's not going to leave you or marry someone or yeah. run away. Like, I can't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know what she's going to do, right? Right. But <laughs> can't make any guarantees, yeah. but, but it's yeah. not extremely possible. But yeah, so yeah. then, um, sometimes they do come talk to me or they yeah. ask for advice, like, where did you live or all these things. So. Yeah. I hope that in a way it helps them to be able to have other like experiences of leaving the com- like the community and mm-hmm. have other experiences than just staying here and not seeing anything of the world yeah. basically yeah 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 um so what do you think cross cultural interactions will look like in the future um and what are your hopes for the way that uh interactions will happen in the future I think there will be always more and more interactions basically there's a lot of uh mexicans moving into the communities mm, here mm-hmm. because um they like the tranquility or that mm-hmm. we have here yeah, yeah so yeah, they're yeah. they're it has started in the last few like four years maybe yeah so more and more people are buying houses mm-hmm. because they're looking for that um yeah the sense of community that that, mm-hmm. that we have here yeah and I think with time, more and more, when they will go, like, they will study mm-hmm. and their parents will be more accepting of, okay, yeah, it's okay to, for you to marry someone mm-hmm. that's not from our culture. Yeah. So I think it's going to change because even in just the last five years, I've seen mm-hmm. that change drastically. Back yeah. then, it was so weird to see a Mennonite dating a Mexican. I got mm-hmm. so much grief for that. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. why? What? What are, what's going to happen once you get married? I'm like, no, 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 calm down. This is just the beginning. Yeah. You're not just talking marriage yet. But right away they think like, you're mm-hmm. so different. The cultures are so different. What's mm-hmm. going to happen if you marry? Like, I do see a point in why they think that because, mm-hmm. um, it's, I wouldn't see, um, a Latino or a Mexican convert to a Mennonite mm-hmm. in the traditional sense. Mm, yeah. I don't see that happening. And uh-huh. I, I do see ha- see someone traditional leaving the community. Oh, so yeah, I think the sure. parents are worried about, especially the girls, yeah. they're worried they're going to leave the church and mm-hmm. start wearing these things that yeah. they're supposed yeah, yeah, yeah. to. So, but I do think it will change because um, if you, yeah, if you see all the, the Mennonites around here now, they have Basic, like they go to town, they, they, mm-hmm. they have a business, a lot of them. So yeah. they have interactions more and more and more, and they're going to mm-hmm. realize that it's, it's not something strange or it shouldn't be weird. Yeah. And I do yeah. hope that with time, I, that everybody can just realize we're all humans and there mm-hmm. shouldn't be, shouldn't look so much at the other person's race and think mm-hmm. we are better or worse than they are. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's still a progress here. I, there is a lot of racism here mm-hmm. still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I think it's, it's also changing there. They're also including a lot of like, um, translators in churches mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. Mexicans will come and they can mm-hmm. hear it on the speakers or in the earphones. Yeah. They absolutely. have a translator there, mm-hmm. which I think five years back would have been, a, or even like eight years back, it would have been so weird to yeah. see. Yeah. But they're doing it more and more. And even mm-hmm. the, which are more mm-hmm. traditional, they're starting mm-hmm. that as well. So oh, yeah. I'm yeah, impressed yeah, yeah. that they think that they should be inclusive in their sermons, that they should not just have it in one language that only a few people understand. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. living in Mexico. I mean, we came here. We should mm-hmm. be more trying to include ourselves more into their culture. Yeah. We don't have to expect them to do that so much for us because mm-hmm. we're the, we're basically the outsiders yeah. in this country. So. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks so much for having this conversation today. You're welcome. Glad to be here.